Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hello everyone, welcome to Industrial Safety Engineering. Today we will discuss key concepts and terminologies. Let us first see the contents. I will explain some of the terminologies related to safety engineering, then hazard theory followed by hazard triangle, different causal factors, hazard recognition. This lecture is primarily based on the book Hazard Analysis Techniques for System Safety written by A. Erickson to Clifton published by Willey. So, as you know that safety engineering is a interdisciplinary subject is taken or borrowed knowledge from different disciplines and over the years it matured and it has its own vocabulary or language. And knowing safety engineering or being uh, expert in safety engineering essentially also include that you know the language of safety engineering. In today's lecture, I want to explain those vocabularies and the definition in such a manner that uh, you, uh, you spell out or speak about all those terms and terminologies in that manner and then it will be understood that you have gone through this course, you have knowledge on safety engineering at the first instance. So, under terminologies, the first one is first one is your safety. So, if you go through dictionary, you will find this definition being safe, freedom from risk or danger. But a better definition could be degree of freedom from harm or danger. So, the basic premises behind this definition under industrial safety or as such under safety engineering every activity whatever you do that contains some amount of danger or risk or harm. So, as a result 100 percent harm uh, that the hazard free operation um, is difficult to have. So, by safety we want to mean when you do some activities or you work somewhere, then what is the freedom you enjoy from harm or danger. So, that is why that freedom is degree of freedom. Okay. For example, if you are working in a control room, AC control room, and you are working near blast furnace or you are you, you are you are operating a machine in wax in soft floor or a person who is driving a car or someone who is who is basically launching uh, that missile 
or or somebody who is basically cooking in the kitchen so you find out that they do not expose to same amount of danger or risk there is degree of difference so that degree of freedom is safety so we will stick to this definition degree of freedom when we talk about safety essentially we also talk about risk because the safety and risk they are very much related terminology when safety is degree of freedom from harm or danger risk is perhaps the measure of that uh, harm or danger so if you go by a dictionary definition you find out that the this is hazard peril jeopardy this many things are common common man definition of risk but from safety engineering point of view the definition what we want to follow is this it's an expression of the impact and possibility of a mishap in terms of potential mishap severity and probability of occurrence i'll explain later on when we discuss about risk assessment or risk quantification in in a better manner i can say that better manner means in more objective manner but for the time being risk is basically a a quantification it's the quantification of hazard potential i will explain hazard little later so it is basically mishap in terms of severity that is important word and another one is probability so risk if it, risk is r then this is probability of occurrence some undesired event times consequence or severity of that undesired event so this is our most traditional definition of risk so we will basically follow the second definition not the dictionary common man definition the safety engineer definition is the second one and we will elaborate in detail on risk the third con terminology which is accident so accident an undesirable or and unexpected event a mishap an unfortunate chance etc etc but this is based on dictionary we will not follow this dictionary definition we will follow definition given by some standard uh, authority where accident or mishap accident is a mishap in mishappenings so that we will define when i define mishappening that time again i will define accident for the time being you think of that someone working at height there is a chance that he will fall so fall of fall from height worker working in a material yard there can be there can be possibility that he will be hit by moving machines hit by objects so these are all accidents so so accident is unfortunate undesirable event okay so then few more definition incident for incident and accident there is similarity as well as dissimilarity incident here anything what is basically may be desirable may be undesirable but we will basically talk about undesirable incident 
and and it is it it can be of any severity any consequence without consequence without severity that is incident but when you talk about accident the severity of consequence is bigger larger than incident but anyhow incident measurement is an important important or incident uh, management is an important issue let us differentiate between incident and accident suppose i said that uh, working uh, at the shop floor sometimes the worker may fall on the same floor or may what may happen that about to slip while about to slip is incident but fall at the floor level that is accident okay so so an accident is an incident but an incident may not be accident but nowadays this definition uh, there is very very less uh, differentiations uh, what i can say the less differences okay i told you about mishap which is nothing but accident but here the dictionary definition is unfortunate accident we will not stick to this we will stick to the second definition given by military standard 882 2d report it is an unexplained event or series of events resulting in death injury occupational illness damage or loss to of equipment or property or damage to environment carefully observe that it is unplanned event or series of events what it will do it will do it may lead to death it may lead to injury it may lead to occupational illness this is all related to personnel personnel then damage to or loss of equipment and property it is related to property then damage to environment third one is environment so there been an accident or mishap lead to damage for personal for property for environment individually or collectively or in combination and mishap and accident are synonymous for us mishap and accidents are events these are unfortunate events these are random events okay so many we say accident two types one is basically man made another one is the chance event so whatever may be the reason that we will discuss later on but for the time being you please stick to this definition it is an unplanned event or series of events resulting in death injury occupational illness damage to or loss of equipment to property and environment damage okay then another important definition for us is hazard very important definition hazard hazard if you go by dictionary see it is basically to risk to put in danger or loss of injury but safety engineer definition should be like this any real and put or potential condition real or potential condition that can cause injury illness death to personnel damage to or loss of a system equipment property or damage to environment both coming from military standard 882d if you see the difference between the two definitions then you see in the first definition when you talking about accident or mishap we are saying an unplanned event or series of events resulting into loss to person property or environment when you are talking about hazard we are talking about any real or potential condition accident event which is realized hazard condition which is not realized but it can 
lead to accident. So, the difference between the two, the difference between the two in the in the one is realized, another one is not realized. Hazard is potential and accident or mishap is the event which is already occurred. But the rest of the thing in this definite two definitions like after resulting in death, injury, illness, all those property damage, environment damage and in the second case also the potential condition that can lead to lead to loss to personal property and environment. So, that is why I carefully observe the two definition and you see that apart except this first part the result series of events this up here and here any real or potential condition this this is the difference rest of the things are same written. Okay. So, that mean accident and hazard they are very much connected and that connection we usually say that if we talk about a coin then if the one side is hazard then other side is accident. So, that mean accident and hazard they are the two they are the two sides of a coin. So, one side is potential condition another side is realization of that potential condition in terms of undesired events leading to loss to property, loss to personal environment of different degrees of uh, freedom or degrees of risk. So, we <coughs> We will go with some example now that we will basically see that what is the accident and hazard. As I told you that accident and hazard are the two sides of the coin. So, as a result the theory to says that that hazard will ultimately convert it to accident, hazard to accident. So, I am I am giving huge importance to these two words hazard and mishap. The reason is that if you if you know what is an hazard and accordingly identify the hazard in the workplace or the system for which you are concerned about for which the safety is an issue then identification of hazard is very very important one and you know that once you know the hazard then it is possible to to combat with the hazard. So, now a safety engineer wants to know that if given the hazard what way it will ultimately lead to actual consequences that means accidents. So, hazard is before state potential condition and accident is after state actual consequences. This hazard is, is converted to accident and that is known as state transition that means hazard is a state and accident is another state. So, there is state transition for any system, for any workplace, for any job. And, uh, with reference to hazard theory, how the hazard state is converted to the accident state, you have to identify, you have to know, you have to find out the path. So, that that transition path, if you know how a hazard will ultimately lead to an accident and accordingly the path is known, path is known, then much work is completed. So, that means by hazard theory what do we mean? We mean that hazard is a potential condition for accident. Now, how this potential condition ultimately lead to accident knowing the path is the job of safety engineer and accordingly putting intervention or barriers in between in such a manner that that path will not realize. So, that is what is basically hazard theory. Now, I will give you one example. 
that what do we mean by what, what is the difference in terms of hazard and uh, accident you see the difference you see the example worker could be electrocuted by touching exposed contacts in electrical panel containing high voltage in electrical panel containing high voltage worker could be electrocuted so what is very important could be electrocuted so that means this is the potential case what is accident worker was electrocuted okay so worker could be electrocuted and worker was electrocuted that is the difference. So, could be electrocuted is a condition and was electrocuted is an event. And then what way it has happened by touching exposed contacts in electrical panel containing high voltage. So, there is no difference here also by touching exposed contact in electrical panel containing high voltage. So, this is the transition that worker could be electrocuted condition you must know and accordingly you put barrier so that it will not happen but if you do not do anything what will happen this will ultimately realize into accident safety engineer must understand that how this potential state will convert it to accident state this transition i am repeating the word transition Okay. And you see apart from this that hazard and accident, accident or mishap there is another quantity called hazard mishap entity. What is this? This is nothing but measure of hazard potential, measure of hazard potential. Okay. That means, what do you mean to say? What is the amount of hazard that that is involved in this particular job, particular work? So, this is what is also known as risk. This is what is known as risk. Okay. So, from hazard theory point of view, hazard mishap entity is an important concept which is basically risk. Okay. So, that means what we have learned? We have seen some definitions, particularly common definitions what a safety engineer should know hazard, accident, risk then incident and safety by what is the definition of safety and then we have found that hazard and accident are two sides of a coin and a safety engineer must know how the hazard state is converted to an accident state. And it is the role job of a safety engineer. So, you first know how hazard will be converted into accident and what is the path, which path it should follow. There can be multiple paths. So, one very important concept that is that the hazard theory that state transition from hazard state to accident state. Okay. Let us uh, see <coughs> this example that the example we have discussed that uh, your um, hazard um, example. Um, I will go by some other color. Okay. So, this one is known to you now that worker could be electrocuted by touching exposed contact in electrical panel containing high voltage. Okay. Now, why this way we have written? Is it the complete definition of hazard? 
how do I I say hazard is the ex potential condition that can cause this 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 in, in actual context when you investigate a workplace or a job or a machine. So, you identify hazard and then what way it should be documented what are the components of a hazard that is known as hazard components. If we carefully analyze this then you will find out a beautiful structure that worker could be electrocuted. Here one is worker who is he he is a target hazard because worker is exposed to the hazard. What is the exposure electrocution? So, that is the threat. So, worker could be electrocuted worker could be electrocuted. So, electrocuted is the threat. Now, this electrocution will will not be possible if the worker do not touch what expose contacts and what is its inter, uh, what I can say that hazard content it is high voltage. So, this example if we write in this fashion then worker could be electrocuted because of two different other things should happen one is that worker must touch what expose contacts. So, this these two events if does not take place the electrocution will not take place. So, these two in between events are known as initiating mechanisms I m stands for initiating mechanisms then containing high voltage high voltage this is the source this is the source of hazard. So, hazard this source of hazard is known as hazard element. So, as a result a hazard has three elements one is hazardous element which is essentially the source of hazard for example, here high voltage second one is initiating mechanism because that high voltage will not cause electrocution unless the wire is exposed bare and as well as the person do not touch. So, person does touch the exposed wire that is why electrocution has take place. So, as a result this is based these are the initiative mechanisms. So, if I write say this is my I m 1 then it is I m 2 or I will I'll write this I m 1 and the sec, this one is I m 2 and this is H e and this one is your target and threat then basically H e this must be present and then I m 1 what is this expose contacts then I m 2 what is this touching by worker then electrocution electrocution. So, this is the path that means hazardous element with a series of intermediate events finally, lead to electrocution of the person or the worker. So, then this is the path so, that means, this hazardous state element this state is now converted to electrocution state. So, you have to identify this path. So, that means, hazard defined by in definition itself the path must be reflected when when someone investigates an accident already occurred or inspect a workplace particular location site or particular job or particular machine being operated. So, he must inspect or investigate in such a manner that this path is clear is understood. If the this path is not understood then what will happen you you will not be a put barrier here for to 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 make it does not happen or 
even if we've had it happens this should not happen so if any one of these two doesn't happen what will happen then electrocution will not happen so that is a very important concept hazard triangle is a very very important concept these three element or these three component of an hazard makes hazard triangle if hazard triangle is complete that mean accident has taken place okay so we'll see some more example some more example i will repeat this important con concept that hazard components hazardous element the base this is the basic hazardous resource creating the impetus for the hazard such as hazardous energy source such as explosives being used in the system okay so keep in mind that your hazardous element is the starting point are you able to identify of all hazardous elements where you are working or for which you are designing so where as you are a safety engineer so basic basically you are a designer you will design a system for the people to work design a product for the per, for for people to use so in that case you must know what are the hazardous elements already inbuilt into the system it can it, can those elements be reduced eliminated suppose this is not possible that your technology from operation and function point of view requires the hazardous source to to be there to be present to be designed in that case you have to know what are the initiating mechanisms that can take place so what is initiating mechanism this is the trigger or initiator events causing the hazard to occur the im cause actualization or transformation of the hazard from dormant state to mishap state that mean what i mean to say suppose someone you talk about a machine moving moving parts are there so there is hazard people working underground under the roof that is that is also actually hazard is there that room may fall someone basically that working in the coke oven uh, or coke near coke oven or coke plant so exposed may be exposed to the coke oven gas so all those things are there they are they are from the production point of view underground mines will be there coke oven, coke plant will be there machine parts will be there so you cannot avoid those hazardous elements but you must see that how, how what way this hazardous element ultimately triggers to a, to different uh, undesired events and finally lead to accidents that should not happen so that mean these initiating mechanism makes the uh, that hazard from dormant state to mishap state accident state so we we do we we have to understand this third one is target and threat it is uh, it is be better understood because target means primarily people then property then environment and threat can be of different kind all those usually by threat we means that death injury something like this okay but there are multiple different context different threats okay please keep in mind very much few more example a pressure tank system where hazardous ele element is high pressure tank hazardous element is here high pressure tank tank may rupture lead to explosion and death suppose you just think of a pet a petrol pump fuel is there the fuel may leak there are ignition source it may lead to fire loss or damage you think of high high voltage what example already we have given okay so these are the some example of hazard components so hazard is very very important concept in safety engineering and all of you must know 
what is hazard, what are the different hazard components and, and we must be able to we must be able to understand that how to document hazard. Here uh, you see that uh, it is basically for describing hazard, how to write properly the hazards in there are poor example and good examples. Suppose many a times what happened based on my, on my experience I have seen that when I have, I have seen some accident report or inspection report people have written repair technician sleeps on oil. So, this kind of this kind of uh, write up is not good this kind of write up is not good example of hazard poor example of hazard or signal MG 71 occurs or person fall fr uh, falls from working platform. Now, good example will be overhead valve V 2 1 leaks oil leaks oil overhead valve walk on walkway below spill is not cleaned repair technician walking in area slips in area slips on oil and falls you just read all those things. What happened? You will find out that in this particular example the hazardous element initiating mechanisms and targets and threats are clearly written. And after, after reading this you will be able to find out that the sequence of events. Similarly, here also suppose person falls from working platform, working platform for plastering work was made without two guard workmen were not using safety belt, end of railing pipe was also not tied properly, persons falls from working platform causing serious injury. Here working platform at height that is basically the hazardous element and what, what are the initiative mechanism it was not having tow guard and workmen were not using any safety belt, then also the railing pipe was not tied properly. So, these three things three initiating mechanisms ultimately lead to person fall from from the working platform and what is the threat here the threat was uh, basically that he or she uh, she uh, she basically ex experienced serious injury okay so this is basically the way you must write hazard by hazard i mean to say that there are three component one is your one is your hazardous element second one initiative mechanism may be one may be multiple there can there can be sequence of initiating uh, mechanisms happening and finally leading to target and threat reduce okay this is what is known as your hazard knowledge ok. So, uh, I will just uh, go go uh, by another slide that what we have learned so far just um, so far in the sense in this particular lecture just I am just basically summarizing this that what are the key hazard theory concepts hazards results in mishaps means hazard results in accident. Hazards are inadvertently built into a system, hazards are not coming out of the that uh, blue, it is basically built inadvertently built into a system means during design, during build, during operation, during maintenance. So, means in the life cycle of a system sometimes somewhere these hazards are built, mostly design is the problematic one. Hazards are recognizable by their components means you must know that hazard has three components one is hazardous ele elements which are basically the resource like hazardous energy source and initiating mechanisms these are the basically series of events that can take place ultimately leading to uh, leading to that accident and accident basically puts threat to the targets targets are people property and environment a design flow can be 
a mishap waiting to happen. Suppose you design a process. Okay. Suppose a boiler you design. And there, there is a flaw. Okay. So, suppose a important sensor safety point of view you fail to install there. What will happen? Any time an accident will happen. Okay. So, design flaw is very very important one. So, that is why we say that safety engineering engineers basically do design. So, safety engineering it should start at from at the design house. It should start it should it should be in at the extreme upstream of a system life cycle. A hazard will occur according to hazard components involved obviously depending on the hazard components. A hazard is deterministic entity not a random event hazard is a deterministic entity understand accident is a random event, but hazard is not a random event it is known. If you do not know what are the hazards at your plant that means you are ignorant about the system you do not have design knowledge you do not have system knowledge means adequate design and system knowledge. Hazards and mishap are predictable obviously as hazard is deterministic it is predictable mishaps even though random they are also predictable. And if something can be predicted, it can be prevented or controlled. Okay. So, this is for today. I hope that I have, give, I have given you the theoretical side of hazard and uh, the issues the com means the components of hazards and, 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 and how you can equate hazard and accident. Uh, if you know hazard, you know accident and it is you the design engineer, the safety engineer who will build a system in such a manner that it will be minimum hazard prone or minimum hazard will be inbuilt because that is required based for the production operation other functionalities point of view, but that minimum hazard also should not be kept uh, that means, what I can say unattended that hazard minimum hazard the hazardous element that is the residual risk later on I will tell you. So, that residual is that also when that should be protected. Okay. So, thank you very much. <coughs>